thank you, David. And, and I want to just say thank you to everyone for uh, spending some time with us today. I just want to say a few things up front uh, as we sort of frame this conversation. The first is that this has been an extraordinary week in which to talk about and learn uh, together how we can do a better job of addressing hunger and poverty around the world. In the United States just a few days ago, uh, the senior most members of the United States Congress got together to unveil a statue of Dr. Norman Borlaug, an American agricultural scientist and a hero to so many of us around the world as someone who worked and fought to end hunger and extreme poverty everywhere he found it, and to do it by giving people the tools to move themselves out of a condition of subsistence and into a place of, of dignity and respect, growth and opportunity. And so uh, as, as that was happening in Washington, the president uh, presented a box of seeds to, uh, to the Pope just yesterday. And uh, while those were seeds from the White House garden and meant to symbolize uh, what seeds do, a future that is bright and hopeful, uh, I'm also very proud of the fact that with David's leadership here and so many others across our administration, President Obama has been able to uh, put forth a vision of ending hunger through agricultural development and opportunity for small-scale farmers, first artic articulated in his first inaugural address, where he said America, under his leadership, would stand with small-scale farmers around the world and provide them with better tools and technologies to move themselves out of poverty. First, we know that agriculture and agricultural productivity growth, especially on small-scale farms, is perhaps the most effective way at reducing extreme poverty, building resilience in environments that are vulnerable, and helping to make sure that the benefits of growth reach the least fortunate amongst us. And so with that basic understanding, the United States under President Obama's leadership has uh, had a more than fourfold increase from about $250 million a year to nearly $1.1 billion a year of financial commitment to agricultural development. We have focused our efforts in those countries willing to make the tough and important policy reforms that EFAD, FAO, and WFP all uh, help countries to do and implement on the ground. And by focusing in 19 core Feed the Future partner countries, uh, we've been able to experience real gains. We now know that in the last year, we reached uh, 7 million small-scale farm households. We use a women's empowerment index to measure the income benefits of these programs and ensure that the majority of income benefits accrue to women because we all know that's ultimately the key to serious and sustained poverty reduction. As you in this critical community of leaders on food and hunger around the world, think about how to accelerate our investments and the sophistication with which we address human nutrition. Uh, I want to just make sure you know that the United States is committed to standing with you. We have made commitments of nearly a billion dollars every year of nutrition-specific investments. Some of that is targeted food and feeding programs in the first thousand days. Some of that is uh, support for agriculture in a manner that specifically improves nutrition outcomes. And some of it is using resources in our child survival and HIV AIDS programs to ensure that vulnerable children are getting access to the food they need in medical or non-medical settings. In that context, USAID will release in the next few weeks a new global nutrition strategy that establishes very clear targets for how America's investment in nutrition will reduce stunting. Uh, and we're setting for ourselves the goal of 20% stunting reductions in the core countries where we invest. As with Feed the Future, we're adopting a model of partnership that requires countries to lead and donors and other partners to follow uh, and believe that the movement uh, symbolized by the Sun Group has been uh, scaling up nutrition, has been an effective model for doing that. 
Uh, and we continue to believe that the private sector plays and civil society play a critically important role in ensuring that these partnerships are multi-stakeholder partnerships. Nearly two years ago at Camp David, President Obama hosted a, the G8 meeting and asked more than 70 companies to make more than $3.7 billion of investments in sub-Saharan African agricultural systems. Those investments were paired with specific policy reforms that countries committed to make to be part of this Grow Africa Alliance. Today, we've seen that more than 60% of the commitments made by companies are on a path towards being realized. In just last year, those corporate investments helped to reach 800,000 small-scale farmers. And together with IFAD and FAO in particular, we all have the task of measuring the impact of those private investments to ensure that they, like our Feed the Future programs, are in fact effectively reducing poverty and hunger in a sustained way. The final point I'd like to raise is around resilience. And uh, we are honored to be here with Earthrin Cousin, who is uh, such a capable leader of an institution that has so much presence all around the world where people are most vulnerable and when people are at their most vulnerable. And I am honored to have seen WFP uh, frontline workers take on huge personal risks to deliver food in Syria, in Pakistan, in uh, parts of South Sudan, in contexts where so many others think that humanitarian actors are unable to go. Using that capability and that presence to help those communities not just get food when it is needed and in an immediate basis, but also build resilience to the shocks and vulnerabilities that keep those communities teetering on the edge of extreme poverty.